you may have wondered what exactly is the scientific method. Has it always existed? If not, where did it start? It has not always existed. In fact, it was invented by people. Our records of who invented it are sparse. So we'll talk about just a few people who advocated for it in recent history. One of the earliest is Ibn al-Hatham, a mathematician, astronomer, physicist, born in the modern day geographical region of Iraq. There is also Galileo, the famous astronomer, mathematician, and philosopher who was born in Italy. Also the Englishman Sir Francis Bacon, philosopher and statesman. So what is it exactly? Well, it's a way of knowing. It's a procedure of inquiry that would lead to additional knowledge. A very important point I want to make is that there's just one scientific method. You may have heard about different branches of science, but we are all using the same scientific method. What is step one? The scientific method starts with observation of some phenomenon of interest. In the case of Galileo, it was the revolution of planets around the sun, or at the time that he began, the possibility that everything revolved around the earth. Step two is to develop an explanation for what you're seeing in the phenomenon. Step three is make a prediction based on your explanation in step two. If X is true, then Y should happen. Step four, test that prediction. Was the outcome that was predicted in step three, did that come to be, did it happen? If your prediction was found to be true, then you can conclude that your explanation was a good one. It made a observable prediction. However, if you did not observe that the prediction occurred, then you have to revise your explanation. Go back to the drawing board. Go back to step two. Revise the explanation and make a new prediction and test that. The scientific method is just that simple. You take these five steps and refine your understanding of a phenomenon through repeated predictions, testing, and revision if needed of the explanation. There is one scientific method and it gets used across many disciplines and what varies across these disciplines is the phenomenon being studied. In geology the phenomenon is rocks or it could be minerals or it could be processes related to these things. In chemistry the phenomena include chemical compounds, chemical reactions, and related topics. In biology, the phenomena are biological organisms and their processes, but the same scientific method is being used across all of these disciplines. In botany, the phenomenon is plants. In physics, the phenomena include energy and mass. Astronomy involves the phenomena celestial bodies and their related processes. Lastly, let's talk about psychology. The phenomenon of interest to us psychologists is the human mind and behavior. When can the scientific method be used? It turns out that some phenomena are more easily studied with the scientific method than others. There are three criteria that must be met if that phenomenon is going to be studyable using the scientific method. The first criterion is, does the phenomenon repeat? It must repeat or occur again in the future if you're going to use the scientific method. The second criterion is that the phenomenon must be measurable. You must be able to turn its qualities into numbers. It must be quantifiable. Typically, the numbers would reflect greater amounts or lesser amounts of the particular phenomenon. So higher numbers would mean more of the thing and lower numbers would be less of the thing. The third criterion 
is that the measurements must be agreed upon by multiple observers, and in this way, the measurements can be objective. So here's a thought exercise. Can you apply the criterion in considering the question, can you study the relationship between socioeconomic status and health? To answer this question, apply the three criteria. Is the phenomenon repeatable? Does it occur multiple times? So health is the outcome variable. Yes, it occurs all the time. It's occurring constantly. Number two, is health quantifiable? Can you measure it? Yes, in fact, there are many, many ways to measure health. The researcher just has to decide which ones to use. And number three, are the measurements something that multiple people can agree on? Will they all agree that yes, this is a reasonable way to measure health? For health, the chances are good that the answer will be yes. Here's another look at the slide showing the three criteria that must be met if a topic is going to be studyable using the scientific method. That's all for now.